Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Jared Payton Show, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. I'm your host, Jared Payton, the voice of Facebook, also the voice of reason, Mr. PZ Blog himself, Nucky Thompson, uh, Boardwalk Empire. What else, man? I got so many other names. Uh, uh, Daddy Tweet, uh, Daddy NDJP. Daycare. Huh? NDJP. NDJP. <clears throat> I just, oh man, I was with my people this weekend. We'll get into that a little bit later. Welcome to the show. 312-564-7375 is the phone number. Sean M. Davis, one on Twitter. My guy is making my sound, sound, sound good. We got Rhino in the back. He is going to be logging to show our favorite intern. He is that guy, even though he is wearing a Tom Brady jersey today. I was just going to let him wear that so you, Sean, could take care of him uh, in between breaks. Uh, you know. Because he has a Miami jersey, too, but I thought if he had the, the Brady jersey on, definitely you you might take him out. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But in studio right now, it is my pleasure to have uh, Miss Ruth Riley in the building right now. Ruth, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. No, 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 no. Thank you. And I don't know, Sean doesn't know this because I never told him, but we have history. Um, when you came to Miami for to play with the Soul, right? It was that was back in the day. Yeah, the day like two thousand one, the day. Dude, that's oh my, two thousand and one, mm-hmm. boy. It's okay, we're not ago. we're not gonna talk about right. how old we're not gonna talk about how old we are. It's a right? Decade. <laughs> Don't say nothing, man. I'm good. Cause back then I was at the Clevelander. You know what I mean? And now I'm changing dirty diapers at home. This is it's been a a great process, but. My mom actually helped with um, with Steve DeBartolaman's wife pick out your stuff for your apartment. Yeah, I had just moved there, and your mom and Arlene and I were just running around Miami trying to find stuff, uh, just moving in. She was a great help. My mom said, uh, "She, I, you know what, when we go to, if we can go to break, I'm going to call my mom and get her to get online because she was so excited. Ruth's coming on? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, we've had, you know, you yeah. know how it is. We, we, Mom, I got uh, so-and-so coming on. I got uh, Barry Sanders coming on. Uh, yeah. She's like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I, I got Roger Goodell coming on. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but Ruth Riley's coming on. Oh, my God. She freaked out. I'm like, <laughs> I got to make sure my I am home. I am on the computer. I'm going to have my glass of cup of joe and i'm gonna listen uh, well, we love you mom shouts out to connie she's good out morning there right cp now. good morning <laughs> mom so the olympics are on right now they this are. is this is big like i'll say this and i don't know if sean saw my tweet or ryan saw my tweet the one thing that gets me about the olympics now is where social media and the internet is because i saw stuff that i was reading in the morning that I was watching at night and already knowing what's going on. It takes it, it, takes, it, takes it away a little yeah. bit. It ruins it a little bit. It was great back in the day when they talked about NBC was prime time and you thought you were seeing it for the first time and you were like, oh, everybody around the world is watching. Now people are tweeting stuff out and putting stuff on social media and letting people know what's going on before. I mean, we even get to watch it. Isn't it a little bit different? It is. It's tough, though, because, you know, Twitter is live, so you want to, like, log action as it happens but for us back here in the united states finding out early just takes away a little bit of the excitement factor 2004 what does that year mean to you well one of the greatest honors i've had as an athlete to represent our country in uh athens olympics and just going back to the birthplace of the olympics was really cool experience back in athens and uh, you know wearing a jersey that says usa i mean there's nothing better than that i'll tell you this it wasn't, wasn't a good year on the other flip side. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a good year on the men's side. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we don't want to go there. I'm glad we had Roof and the ladies over there. <laughs> I think when you talked about how big of an honor it is, uh, when we had the Olympics here in Atlanta, uh, well, before, my dad actually carried the torch. And I got to carry the torch when it was here in Atlanta. And so I got to actually uh, carry the last leg into Grant Park here in Chicago and get to light the light here. And it was bananas, right? Now, first of all, I was a little bit out of condition. So uh, I, was, I was trying to sprint, and I had something that big. I had the torch in my hand, and I didn't know how real heavy it was. And so I, I sprinted out. I was sweating so bad. But just the honor to be a part of of that was huge. I can only imagine participating and playing a sport. And for me, you know, there's no football. So, I mean, the only thing I could probably do is probably handball. I mean, handball, (laughs) swimming, definitely not. I'm not cut enough. All these dudes got nice bodies, not me. I'm a fullback. I got a fullback body. Or 
what's another sport that I think I could succeed in? Mm. At walking. You know that, uh, what is it called? You know the speed walking? Come on, Son, <laughs> I'm good. You couldn't box? Nah, dude, I'm not boxing. We're 4-0 in boxing right now. Yeah. I know. We're taking over. Yeah, Gymnastics. Badminton? I could do badminton, too. Table tennis? Yeah, I ain't that fast, dude. Sports science showed me how fast it is. I Incredible can't. action. Incredible action. What about the girl? What about the women's basketball team this year? You got two teammates that are on the squad, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Sylvia Fowles and Swin Cash. Both their second Olympics. Swin was there in 2004, and still so last year or last time in in China. So we're well represented here in Chicago. In your the time, you know how you know normally when you're playing your sport for football, you know we we have a just a regimen of how we go through our, our days. What is it like, though, in your downtime when you are in the Olympics? What do you do in your downtime? Do you go check out other events? Uh, I mean, were you – because I know some people are so focused on, you know, we got to play. But did you find time to actually go out and see the surroundings and also go to some cool events? Yeah, I mean, uh, right now in pool play, they're playing every other day and opposite the guys. So generally you'll, you'll have a practice in the morning or early afternoon and have the opportunity to either go watch the men's team play or – you know, for me, I love beach volleyball, so I checked out some volleyball, some swimming, uh, you know, some different other different sports. Now, we always see that. Is that something that was voluntary or mandatory, going to see the men's or the men's coming to see the women's play? When no, you I think it's just showing play. love to, you know, your respective athletes. And uh, obviously, we stay in the same area. The men's and women's basketball team travel together. Um, and so we definitely want to be there to show some love. How is Olympic Village? I always wanted to ask that question. What is it like? Is it like being on a college campus? You know, unfortunately, the, the girls and, and guys, we don't get to stay in the village. Um, we usually stay in a, a separate location because security, other issues. So, understand. Um, you know, the times that we were there, uh, it's just amazing. I mean, yeah. you know, you walk in, you see not only other athletes from the U.S. that you probably have never had a chance to meet, but, you know, around the world. I mean, it's just a great opportunity to, you know, if you're a sports fan in general i mean you know i'm a fan of so many other athletes what are your first thought your thoughts about the first game u.s women's had they struggled a little bit in the first half and then fourth quarter they pretty much just stretched out the lead ended up with a 20 point 20 point plus victory um did you expect the game to be that close or was it just that's how olympic play is because of course when it comes to basketball i think the arrogance of the united states is we just walk in the building throw out the balls and win by 30. Unfortunately, when you compete, you know there are other players in other areas of the world that are pretty good. I think the media hypes uh, our teams up more than the athletes have understanding, yeah. you know, and respect for other countries and knowing that they're going to give us their best shot. I yeah. mean, uh, shots are going to fall against us. They probably won't fall uh, on normal nights. And I think, you know, the night after opening ceremonies, it's a long night. You yeah. get up, you play a game. I mean, it's to be expected, the first game, to be a little – little shaky and then you know you saw them pull away at the end definitely deeper than most teams would you agree oh yeah i yes. mean it's got to be a luxury as a coach you know to, to look down the bench and i mean who do you put in and when yeah. you know last week we had a young man who's a junior here in, in chicago jaleel okafer he's actually number two in the class of 2014 from whitney young and we were talking to him about aau basketball from the men's side and how it's changed how do you think gr women's basketball has changed from college going down into the high school level with the exposure now, especially with Twitter? How has it changed for young ladies, them being exposed to everybody in the world and their skills? Well, I think not only the exposure, but just the opportunities yeah. that, that girls have starting at a young age, like organized, good coaches, quality teams put together, um, very focused uh, but then Twitter does change things. I mean, look at my girl from Notre Dame. I mean, shout out to Sky Diggs. Like, she's, she's got an amazing following, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the fact that as an athlete, you can reach out and touch other people via social media and they can reach you, I mean, it changes the game. See, I, uh, people don't know. I, you know, true Notre Dame fans know. Listen. Skyler's the second coming. <laughs> she's the second coming. You know, she's not the first cute Notre Dame point guard. Okay. You got a Neil Ivey fan yes, over here? Yes, the point guard <laughs> that won the national championship with my dear friend right here. She yeah. started it all. And he led the way, and uh, obviously she's a, a mentor as an assistant coach now at Notre Dame. Definitely. So she's, she's helping guide Sky a little bit. But that's I, I think that is 
the great thing about social media and being in college and the one thing that I try to tell some of these younger kids is like, yo, while you're in school, if you can create a base and create a following, do it because that's a big platform for you, especially if you're playing at the highest level on good teams. Keep that because people always think that, you know, they the athletes, these kids that are growing up, man, I'm going to make it to the pros and it's going to be all good. But you, you can capture people from where you're from and like – just say, Tim, let's just say Tim Tebow never played in the NFL, right? He still makes an impact. He, he could go back to Gainesville yeah. and still, like, open up some car dealerships. And, you know, just don't ever forget where you came from. But also, too, while you're there, grow, plant seeds. Because you just really never know when you might have to go back or, Definitely. you know, if you have to go back. Definitely. So, we're on with Ruth Riley here on the Jared Payton Show. ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. 312-564-7375 is the phone number. A lot of stuff going on with you. You had a, a nice event at Rocket the other night. Was it the 27th? Uh-huh. Yeah, for opening ceremonies. How was it? It was great. Uh, you know, just a, a fun atmosphere. A lot of TVs had the game, the opening ceremonies on. And, you know, I mean, that's a geography lesson in itself. You yes, see all those countries definitely. and you're like, where in the world is that? <laughs> JP, how many countries did you see that you didn't know existed? Man, a bunch. All right. <laughs> And you know what's funny? Because the the Americans are so deep. You know what I mean? They come out, they look like it's just a gang full of them, right? Did you and like the berets? Yeah, you. Yeah, I just wish everything was made in the USA. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Ralph said he'll solve that problem. Thank you. That's all I ask. So. That's all I ask. Let's keep it in the U.S., man. We got You got to take care of the U.S. But right after that, it was some country that I had no clue was in the games. They had like four people walking. I'm like, yo. 